Hello boys and girls. My name's Andy Langdon. I'm a naturalist with the Elkhart County Parks Department. Today we're going to talk about mammals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mammals, boys and girls, are a very special group of animals. What's a mammal, Uncle Andy? It's a very special group of animals. What's an animal, Uncle Andy? <clears throat> An animal, boys and girls, now usually we get these two mixed up, okay? When we think of animals, we think of mammals. I mean, if I ask you to mention a, an animal, you usually say a cat, a dog, or something like that. Something with fur, sometimes with feathers. But, boys and girls, an animal is any kind of a critter that, uh, that moves around by itself. It's alive, and it moves around by itself. That's a simple definition of an animal because you could go on into like cell walls and things like that. You get really complicated if you really wanted to. But boys and girls, an animal is anything that moves around by itself, basically. So it's alive, it moves around by itself. Now, that means, is an earthworm an animal? Yeah, earthworms are animals, boys and girls. Um, uh, bees are animals, and birds are animals, fish are animals. Crayfish are animals, octopuses are animals, elephants are animals, whales are animals. So there's all kinds of different animals. But mammals are a very special group of, of animals. And I'll show you why here. Animals can, uh, they, they can be cold-blooded. Some animals are cold-blooded, some, some animals are warm-blooded. But mammals, all mammals are warm-blooded. All mammals, boys and girls, have hair. You gotta have hair or fur in order to be a mammal. So you gotta have hair or fur in order to be a mammal. Okay, so that's two characteristics. They're warm-blooded, they have fur or hair, and they drink milk from their mother. So they drink milk from their mother. Okay, that is another characteristic of a mammal. And also, boys and girls, mammals do not come from eggs. Mammals are born alive, okay? All mammals are born alive. Now there are a couple of exceptions to that. The spiny echidna, and the duckbill platypus, they both lay eggs, okay? But those are the only two exceptions. All mammals are born alive, okay? So that makes a mammal a mammal. Now I brought some of my, uh, some of my friends, the, the mammals, boys and girls, here with me today. Let me show you some of my buddies around here that, uh, that, that I brought with me out here in the forest at Oxbow Park today. <clears throat> this is our friend, the skunk. Okay, the striped skunk. Now there are different varieties of skunk, but we've got the striped skunk around here, boys and girls. And they have this, uh, sometimes they have a stripe down the back. Sometimes they have a split stripe down the back. Sometimes they don't have any stripes. Some of them are black, some of them are white. It depends on the skunk. And they got these long claws, boys and girls, for, uh, for catching any kind of insects that they might like to eat. Because these are what we call insectivores. Can you guys say insectivores? Insectivores, very good. Insectivores, boys and girls, eats insects. So any mammal that uh, that is insectivore eats insects. Okie dokie. So this is an insectivore, and uh, they do have a sprayer, and everybody going ooh ooh. But boys and girls, these things are not going to spray you just to be spraying you. You know, it takes a, a few days for them to reload their load, and so if they spray you, and along comes a coyote, then uh, he's not got any kind of defense. So he's going to try to get away from you. If you've ever seen these things, they don't walk. They kind of waddle. And they're waddling away from you there. So they kind of waddle away. But we've got lots of different kind of uh, insectivores and those animals that eat insects. Okay. Now, another one, boys and girls, is our bat. And we'll talk more about the bat in a different program here. We'll talk more about the bat, okay? Um, this one here is the, uh, the big brown bat. We've got also the little brown bat. The two most common bats around here. They are also insectivores because they eat insects, all right? Um, could go with molds and shrews and things like that. So we go on and on with the list of, uh, of insect eaters. But let me show you another group, group of animals. And those are the herbivores. Herbivores, boys and girls, eats plants, okay? Herbivores eat plants. So let's start off with their... Oh, bunny rabbit. So the, the eastern cottontail boys and girls, we call him the bunny rabbit. Um, he is made for survival. If you look at him or her, you'll notice boys and girls that his fur or her fur are, is not one solid color. It's different colors, it's different patterns here. And that is so that when, when maybe they're in the, uh, the brush or something, they, uh, they blend in. They're very hard to see, so they camouflage into that brush. And look at these big ears. 
Now, boys and girls, those ears, those are, uh, those are made for hearing, okay? They, uh, they can hear very, very well. So they can hear for a long distance with those, uh, those big ears there. And the nose, boys and girls, he's, uh, it's in his teeth there. You can see that uh, he's made for eating and he's made for, he's got a good sense of smell to him. And look at those eyes. Those eyes, boys and girls, can see in the back of him. They can see overhead. They can see on the sides of him and they can see in front of him. So if there's a hawk or something overhead, he can see him and uh, he can get away from him. So they've got a lot of babies, boys and girls. They have one or two litters of babies a year. Now down south, they may have two or three litters a year, but they may have four, they may have eight babies a year. And so that adds up to a lot of babies every year. So they've got a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, ways of surviving. And then they got these light bones, they're very light boned, and they got these great big legs back here. So don't ever try to outrun a bunny, okay? Because they can run really fast. Okay, boys and girls, here we have a white killed deer, and it's a little baby. And you can tell it's a little baby because it's got these little, which is small, but it's got these little white spots on it. So it'll lose its spots after it's uh, after about six months. The boys and girls, the sad thing is, is uh, we do not have white tailed deer here in Indiana. Um, not until like the 1930s, they uh, they were all killed off. The habitat was destroyed. So now we've got. Uh, white-tailed deer it's quite common around here so we're very glad to have the white-tailed deer but the uh, the old joke is what's the poorest animal in the world it's a fawn because it doesn't have a scent i'll pause for the laughter a scent boys and girls is something that is a smell okay so you can take off your shoe and you smell that and that is what we call a scent all right now um, the, the fawn doesn't have a scent because if it had a scent, animals could smell it. Mama deer will leave her baby out in the woods, out in the field, out, in the, out uh, somewhere where there's a lot of brush and they can't be seen. So uh, animals can't smell it, so if along comes a cougar or whatever, uh, they're not going to be able to smell him so they're not going to find him. That way mama can feed or hide out in the woods away from him. If mama's spotted, she can run away, but the baby can't. So the baby's got to stay right there in the, uh, in the brush and stay hidden so they don't have a scent so that they can't be smelled. All right, so this is a white-tailed deer, and this is, a, uh, this is another herbivore, an animal that eats plants. Okay? Now, here we got a couple of, couple of species of uh, squirrel. This is a, a, uh, it's a black squirrel, and we've also got the gray squirrel, and these two are related very much related. So they're found just about all over the place in woods and uh, you can even find them in towns and things like that. So these are uh, these are a couple of species of squirrels. We've also got the fox squirrel. Here's our friend the fox squirrel. And he, uh, he's been eating some walnuts as you can see down here. But uh, this one boys and girls is the one that makes a leaf nest up in the trees that um, Sometimes in the winter time, you can see them real easy, but in the summertime, it's not a good idea because other things will find it, like hawks and owls, and then they'll kill the uh, the squirrels. So he leaves the leaf nest in the winter time and finds another uh, finds another home. So this is a fox squirrel. This is our largest squirrel in Elkhart County. It's uh, what's called the fox squirrel. Okay. And another kind of squirrel we've got. This one here. This is our smallest squirrel. This is a red squirrel sometimes called a piney squirrel and they eat a lot of pine cone seeds so they call him a, a piney squirrel there he is okay that's a red squirrel and then we got a uh, what's called a 13 line ground squirrel now boys and girls the 13 line ground squirrel usually lives out in the uh, out in the field so if you see a hole about that big out in the uh, out in the woods or out in the field and uh, kind of go straight down and then curves. Uh, that would be this guy right here. This is the, uh, the the 13 line ground squirrel. Another one that looks like him is this guy right here. And this is a chipmunk. And the chipmunk, boys and girls, lives in the forest. Okay, so that's how you can tell these two apart. This one lives in the field, and this one here lives in the in the woods.
All right. Last but not least, boys and girls, is this one here. These are called flying squirrels. Now, boys and girls, flying squirrels are very secretive. Very secretive. It's uh, you usually only find them at nighttime because they are nocturnal, which means they come out after nighttime. So they've got these flaps of skin here, so they can fly. Um, and they can fly about 300 yards on a uh, on just from one tree to another one, so they can fly quite a ways. But uh, see the big eyes on them? They use them big eyes for after nighttime when they can't see very well. They use them big eyes that let in a lot of light, and then they can see very, very well. So these are flying squirrels, boys and girls. They got the big old flat tail, the flaps of skin here for, for catching the wind. So these are flying squirrels. And last, boys and girls, we've got, it's in the squirrel family, but he's not a squirrel, and it's not a beaver. Even though it got like beaver teeth on him. This one, boys and girls, this is a, uh, it's called a groundhog. And um, they're very common. They usually come out during the daytime. But the groundhog, boys and girls, is a, uh, he's a true hibernator. And when I talk about true hibernating, I mean that he sleeps. He sleeps a lot during the winter time. Sleeps most of the winter time. Very rarely does he wake up. Um, he's, uh, he's got little eyes and he's got a little nose. So he can't see very well, but he can hear very well. And he can smell pretty good too. But um, they, when they hibernate, boys and girls, they will uh, they'll go into almost a state of death. In other words, uh, their, their body temperature, boys and girls, just falls right above freezing. Oh, so this is our buddy, the, uh, the, uh, the groundhog. It's also called a whistle pig sometimes because he does kind of whistle sometimes. But it lives in the ground, and so they call him a groundhog. Okay, boys and girls, here's something. This is our largest North American rodent. Now a rodent, boys and girls, is like a, it's like a rat. Okay, it's got these feet here for chewing. And uh, they'll get up to about 60 pounds around here. So he is a big one. Um, but this guy, boys and girls, he's got webbed feet like a duck. And look at that tail. That tail, boys and girls, can warn animals of danger because it slaps on the water, and it kind of sounds like a shotgun when you see something that you don't like, like a coyote. Then I slap that tail on the water, and that tells the other animal that there's danger around. But he also use that tail to kind of, kind of steer himself through the water. He'll use that tail, boys and girls, to uh, to regulate his temperature. What does that mean? Well, he'll get put put it on the bank or or the bank or maybe a uh, a log or something like that. And then the sun hits that tail, and it warms his whole body up. Now, if he's cold, that's what he does. But if he's warm, boys and girls, he can uh, stick that tail in the water and cool the, his whole body off while he chews down a tree or something like that. So he uses that tail for a lot of things. He also angers itself on the tree with that tail. So he uses it for a lot of things. Um, he's got, boys and girls, he's got like goggles underneath these eyes right here. There's goggles, kind of a, a thin plate, a thin tissue that comes over this eye and it, uh, it keeps the water out. Also, if he's got a stick in his mouth, he's got a tissue behind his mouth there that will close, and that prevents water from getting down in his lungs there while he's swimming, maybe underneath the water or something like that. So this is our largest rodent, the North American beaver. Now, he looks a lot like this next fella right here, and it looks like a little baby beaver, but look at his tail, his tail is different. Okay, it's not big and fat and flat like the uh, like the North American beaver. This one here is what, is what we call a uh, a muskrat, and muskrats are very common around here, as is the beaver. But the muskrat is even more common than what the beaver is. So this is a full-grown muskrat, and uh, he's also got that fur like the beaver does. He's got these guard hairs out here, and to keep him nice and warm, boys and girls, he's got this fur right underneath here. It's very soft fur. So he's the number one hunted animal around water. Okay, so he's a number one hunted mammal. All right. I think we're all familiar with this guy. This is a uh, raccoon. And they used to be called a member of the bear family because they're very smart. But uh, they're, they don't call them members of the bear family anymore. Although they're still very smart. They're still very smart animals. Uh, but they would use these hands in order to find uh, maybe clams or something like that, and they break them up with his hands, and then he eats them. 
Now they say that coons, raccoons will wash their food. They don't really wash their food, boys and girls. What they're doing is they're, they're taking, they're wetting their food so they can eat a lot easier because they, their salivary glands are not like ours. So it's harder for them to swallow than what it is for us. So if there's water around, then they will uh, wet down their food so they can eat a lot easier. But if it's a crayfish or something like that, he'll break the, the pinchers off of it so that he can eat it. So this is our friend, the raccoon. I think most of us are familiar with the raccoon. This is our friend, the possum. <laughs> the awesome possum. Not just any possum, but the awesome possum. Now this is a girl, and the reason I know it's a girl is because there's a pouch right down here in her belly, just like a kangaroo. Okay, kangaroos have their babies in their, in their they're called marsupials. And they have their babies, and they, yeah, the babies stay in their pouch until they're a certain age. The joeys, I guess you could say. But in this particular case, the uh, little baby possums stay in the pouch. And she'll have anywhere from, uh, from like uh, maybe 9 to 13 of these things. So uh, that's a lot of them to, uh, to be in that little pouch right there. But uh, they do say possums play dead. They don't really play dead, but they do go into a state of shock. Just like any other animal, like a, a rabbit or a mouse or something like that. If your cat gets it, it'll go into a state of shock. And these guys do too, but uh, they're able to come out of that state of shock. A lot of other animals don't. So um, this is our friend, the, uh, the awesome possum. Okay, boys and girls, the, uh, the raccoon, the possum, and now I'm going to show you another guy here. These are all what's called omnivores, and that means that they eat. And that means, boys and girls, that they eat plants and animal material okay so uh, these are omnivores all right see this guy here <laughs> well boys and girls this guy probably his mama and papa or great 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 grandfather or great 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 grandmother probably came from england and the reason that i say that is because a lot of them were brought over from england which is way across the ocean so that they could be hunted around here. Because this is a very smart, very smart fox. This is called the red fox. And they're extremely smart. And if you've got a dog that can outsmart a red fox, you've got a dog that's worth a lot of money. It's, uh, it's a very hard animal to out fox. That's, so he was, he was probably brought over from England way back in the olden days. And, um, might have mixed with one of our foxes here. We've got what's called the North American red fox, but uh, probably not, it's hard to say. Scientists just don't know for sure. But anyway, he's here, and he's got the great big bushy tail. Very smart fox. Got this great big bushy tail. So if it's really cold out, they don't go down the hole or in a cave or anything like that. They just sit down the ground, they put this big old tail around their nose, and that's how they keep themselves nice and toasty. <laughs> So he's our buddy, and he's around here in Elkhart County, and it's called the Red Fox. We also have the Gray Fox here, but the Gray Fox, boys and girls, is a little bit different. Now the Gray Fox is not a, uh, it's not a, a real smart like the Red Fox is, but they're also called Tree Foxes. And a Tree Fox, boys and girls, are just, see these claws? See those claws? Those claws, boys and girls, are used for climbing trees because they can climb right up a tree and get away from the, uh, the dogs that are hunting them. So gray foxes, boys and girls, uh, also called tree foxes, uh, they're usually gray and they kind of hold their, their tail down when they're running. The red fox holds its tail up when it runs. So that's how you can tell the difference at a distance. Now, boys and girls, the red fox will kill that gray fox if he happens to see him, if he happens to be able to catch him without him climbing up a tree, because red foxes can't climb trees. So, the gray fox has a defense. He can get up a tree, and that way he gets away from the red fox. But, there's another one. And that one here, that is this guy here. You guys know what this is? Arf, arf. <laughs> Boys and girls, this is what we call a coyote. Now, do we have coyotes in Elkhart County? Yes. 
We do have coyotes in Elkhart County. We've got quite a few coyotes in Elkhart County. Usually you hear them before you see them because they're very secretive, boys and girls. They usually smell you or they hear you or they can see you before you're anywhere near them. Remember, these guys are built for survival. So in the, at nighttime, boys and girls, they can see very, very well. We can't see very well, but they can see very, very well. So uh, this is the coyote, and he will kill both the, um, both the red fox and the gray fox if he can catch him because they're eating all of his food, and he doesn't like it. So he tries to catch them so he doesn't, they don't eat all his food from him. So this is the, uh, the coyote. <laughs> okay, so all of those boys and girls are what's called omnivores. Can you guys say omnivore? Omnivores. Yeah, omnivores, boys and girls, eat both plant and animal material okay so those are omnivores now we're going to talk about a few carn they're called carnivores because they eat meat okay so our first carnivore this little guy right here and he's not very big but uh you know this can take down a rabbit this little guy right here boys and girls he can take down a, a groundhog a small groundhog so they yeah they eat meat that is their their diet so he usually takes down these uh these uh, smaller animals like um, maybe a mouse or something like that or a bird so he's uh what are you going to so boys and girls this is a uh, this is a predator okay and he's uh, he's looking for all kinds of uh, of things to eat and i'm not something that you can eat oh and this boys and girls this is a mink now if you find one of these boys and girls you can see they're a uh, pretty good size here Find one of these boys and girls, look underneath the chin there, it's got a white patch, you'll know it's a mink because all minks have that white patch. They're real pretty, chocolate, too. and you notice they're not that, uh, they're, they're not that different uh, patterns like the bunny rabbit had. And the reason is because this is our top predator, or one of our top predators anyway. Of course, other things eat him too, like a hawk may eat him, a grizzly bear might eat him, a, um, maybe a badger or something like that might eat him. So this is a, uh, this is a mink, or I think it's a mink. Anybody know what that is? Yeah, it gives you a little bit better picture of him. Now do you know what that is? Boys and girls, this is what we call an otter. And uh, otters like the waters. So this guy spends a lot of his time around the water. He's a very playful critter. They like to spend a lot of their time playing. They'll eat fish and eggs, bird eggs or whatever they can find, clams and everything like that. So they spend a lot of their time in water. They take their, uh, their, their bellies here and they'll slide down a mud bank or snow bank. And like I said, they used to call them the clown of the forest because they spend so much time playing. So they call them the clown of the forest. But that's an otter, boys and girls. Here's something else. Ooh, what is that, you ask? This is called a badger, boys and girls. Now, you might have heard of badgers. They have a bad reputation. So they call them badgers. But boys and girls, see that stripe? Back in the olden days, a, um, a stripe by itself, boys and girls, or a mark by itself, was called a badge. You know, the, uh, this thing I'm wearing here, this is a badge, okay? It's a, it's a mark that, uh, that tells something specific. And that, that was what this thing here was. It, uh, if you saw that on an animal, you knew that you had a, a badger. Now, the, uh, that's one theory about how the badger got its name. Another theory, boys and girls, is that it, um, it comes from the French word bachier, which means uh, a digger. So I don't know exactly which one it is, but um, it's either bachier, a digger, they got the name badger from, or it's because of this stripe right here that... Uh, that they thought it was very unique, so they called it a badger, okay? Badger, boys and girls, has really long claws. Take a look at those claws. <laughs> so these claws, boys and girls, can dig as fast as 10 men with shovels. So he's a fast digger. Why did he dig that fast, Uncle Andy? Because back in the olden days, boys and girls, when there was uh, coyotes and, uh, and grizzly bears, and still out west you got all these things, but not around here. But back then, boys and girls, he had to dig fast because he had a lot of enemies back then. So he would dig down in the ground very, very rapidly, 
and he would be able to keep his entire body underneath the ground and still fight off his enemies with his face here. Not too many things, boys and girls, want to mess with that face because he got very, very sharp teeth because he is a predator and a very fierce predator. And he can, uh, you know, he can take down some big animals, boys and girls. So he's, uh, he's very, very fierce. He got a very short tail. But look how flat he is. The reason he's flat, boys and girls, is because he spends a lot of time in the ground. Now, he will dig out a, um, like a groundhog. He will go down into the groundhog hole. The groundhog has an entrance and an exit. So the groundhog goes down one side, and then he comes up the other side. And when he comes up the other side, guess who's waiting for him on the other side? A coyote. Because the coyote will follow the badger around, waiting for him to flush out food so that the coyote has something to eat. So the poor little badger gets left out. <laughs> All right. Finally, boys and girls, we got this guy right here. And this, boys and girls, is called a bobcat. Why do they call it a bobcat? Okay, I'm Well, I'm going to tell you why they call it a bobcat. You see this thing right here? That is a short tail. Now you've heard the song, Jingle Bells, dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Or the fields we go, laughing all the way, bells on bobtail ring. Um, that's it. Bells on bobtail ring. What is bells on bobtail ring? Well, boys and girls, back in the olden days, they had this horse. And it had this short tail, and it was called a bobtailed horse. Because the word bob was just another word for, the, for, uh, for something that was short. So they called the uh, short tail a bob tail. So it's a bobtail horse. And they had the bells on the bobtail horse that were ringing. So it's bells on bobtail ring. And this is a bobbed cat. So a short name for the bobcat would be bobcat. Okay, bobbed cat. This is a bobcat. And uh, sometimes boys and girls, you have feral cats that are quite large. But if you don't know if it's a bobcat or not, take a look at his tail. It's got a short tail. It's got these little tufts up here on its ears. And it's got some spots down here. You'll know it's a bobcat. Okay, sometimes feral cats. Feral cat, boys and girls, is a cat that gets loose or uh, somebody's abandoned and it just grows wild. And so uh, sometimes they get quite large. Instead of growing fat, they get quite large like this kitty cat here. All right, well, thank you very much for, uh, for listening. I hope you learned something, maybe had a little fun in the process. So this is Uncle Andy signing off. Serenata or whatever. All right, later. Mm.